Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. It's the team that so many people said won the portal season, Jeff, because they went out and they landed four of the best transfers in the transfer portal. Lost one of them on uh, on, on Wednesday afternoon. Riley Kugel has reopened his uh, recruitment. This doesn't necessarily come as a surprise because if you listen to any of the interviews that Bill Self did, he kind of hinted at the fact that he wasn't sure if Riley Kugel was going to make it to campus. Turns out he's not going to be there. Part of the reason he's not going to be there, after he committed, Kansas went out and added Zeke Mayo, AJ Store, and Rylan Griffin. So all of a sudden, he went from the priority recruit to maybe like the eighth guy off the bench if he had stayed there. So what do you make of Riley Kukul reopening his commitment, uh, his recruitment, um, and what does this mean for Kansas' big picture? Yeah, I don't think Bill Self lost any sleep over Riley leaving. Uh, I'll say that much. I, I don't <laughs> think it impacted him uh, whatsoever. You couldn't no, just but be I nice, man. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. Like, look at their top seven or eight and tell me how Riley was going to get more than 12, 15 minutes a game. And he's not going to be happy with that. So, in a way, you, you've got to figure that out if you're a coach right now, is right? Like, you're paying all these dudes money. They have expectations. Um, obviously, Bill Self wants more depth than he had a year ago. Um, but you also have to have guys in those like ninth, 10th spot that understand. Uh, their roles. And like El Marco Jackson's got to be one of those guys this year, right? He's a role guy. He's he's probably going to play less than he did a year ago. Um, Zach Clements is going to come out of his red shirt and play a little bit and play probably 12, 15, 18 minutes a game. But look at their top seven, Rob, and tell me you can find a, a better top seven right now in the country. I, I know we're going to get to our top 10 preseason uh you know, right now in, in a little bit, but like, look at it. You've got three core guys back, three really good players, right? Hunter Dickinson, Dewan Harris, and KJ Adams, who are all veterans who are there, who've known the system, all that. And then you add AJ Store, uh, Ryland Griffin, um, Zeke Mayo. You know, Griffin and Mayo address a huge need of, of perimeter shooting that Kansas didn't have last year. And AJ Store addresses a huge need a guy that can go get a bucket off the bounce. So, you know, to me, this team fits together well now, something it did not do a year ago. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I do think it is interesting, though, um, with with Riley reopening his recruitment is, is something that I was thinking about the last couple of days, right, where we've kind of seen – all of the best transfers outside of great Oswald, all of the best transfers that don't also have their name in the uh, in, in the NBA draft and are going through that process. Most of them have already committed to places, but kind of like what happens when you are um, when you are recruiting incoming freshmen, right? Like that doesn't really matter until somebody puts pen to paper and signs an NLI, right? Not an NIL, signs an NLI, a National Letter of Intent. Um, and we kind of see this often with the freshman recruiting process where uh, people will commit early in the process, then reopen their com their commitment. And whether that's because they got a better offer from somewhere else, whether that's because uh, they were, I don't want to say recruited over, but there were more players that came in at their position, kind of like what we saw here with Riley Kugel at Kansas. Um, but I do wonder if there are going to be coaches that are flush with NIL funds right now because they were promised all this money and they weren't able to actually spend it on some of the players that they wanted to go out and get. And instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to overpay for somebody that's still in the portal, um, I'm going to go out and try to, to snag one of these guys by overpaying for somebody that's on someone else's roster uh, in pencil right now. Is that something that could happen? And is that happening behind the scenes in college basketball in the world of the transfer portal? Yeah, of course. I mean, it Everybody out there understood what Kansas did. And you look at the numbers. And it could be that way at Arkansas at some point, right? If Calipari adds two, three more dudes, somebody's going to look at that roster and say, well, somebody's going to be unhappy there. Let me talk to his people. Now, hopefully there aren't coaches dumb enough to reach out directly to these kids that aren't in the portal. You know, that that's my biggest thing right now. If there are, I can't wait to get a hold of those texts, Rob. Because if those texts get to me, I will absolutely put them out there publicly. Um, because to me, if you're dumb enough 
to go and, and reach out to a kid directly that's not in the portal, um, then then you deserve to have that text be out there publicly. Uh, most people are going to their AU coaches, their mentors, all that. That's been going on for years, though. You know, I know Kim English put out a tweet about, you know, people messing with Bryce, Bryce Hopkins, and I understood it. But, like, that's nothing new. That's really nothing new. That's been going on for years uh, to get kids to transfer. And maybe they went directly to Bryce. I don't know if that's the case or not. If they did, again, that's that's absolutely stupid. Um, but, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they still would have been trying to get Bryce to transfer. They just would have been talking to Bryce's you know, AU coaches, high school coaches, mentor, whoever it is. So all this stuff is going on right now. It's a game being played by everybody because, like you said, when you miss on some dudes and you got to go to your B-list guys, and now there's just not a lot of guys out there because you went all in on some guys, you, you got to figure it out. And that includes poaching or trying to poach from other people's rosters. Um, all right, let's just – I know that is kind of new, and I don't think that Riley's released an official – list yet but when he committed to uh when he committed to kansas the top four were arizona yukon houston and kansas um i do not believe yukon is adding anybody else from the transfer portal this year i also don't believe that he was actually being recruited by yukon when he put them on the list uh he doesn't strike me as a houston kind of a player would it fit at arizona if caleb love is gone and if not if you could kind of play matchmaker here where would you take Riley Kugel, a guy who, like, let's be honest, has first round caliber talent that hasn't quite put it all together yet. Where's a good fit for him to be and play this next season of college basketball? Yeah, I think Arizona would be a spot if Caleb Love doesn't come back that fits him. But like you said, his original list when he came out with it, um, out of those four schools, two of them weren't really recruiting. Um, and, and I'm not sure they would have taken him. Um, but uh, again, I, Houston, they're set. They're set. UConn set at this point, you know, unless Caravan doesn't come back. And, and then certainly there's some minutes on the table there. But, you know, I, I think Arizona. But again, if you're Riley this time around, you might as well wait another week or two and see these guys that are that are right now in the portal and in the draft process and see what happens with those guys. Because what you don't want to have happen is go somewhere else like Arizona and then have Caleb Love withdraw from the draft, and then you're looking at being, you know, the ninth man again. Yeah. Um, I would just say, you know, there's going to be lots of minutes and lots of shots available at uh, Kentucky and at Arkansas, and I know that they have NIL money to spend. And um, I do know that that both of those programs could use another uh, veteran piece in their backcourt that knows the SEC. See, and, I would look uh, more. I, if I'm him, if I'm him, I'm looking, I'm, I'm scrapping my list. I'm starting over from scratch. And I'm looking at places like Oklahoma, you know, that, that have some NIL money, that just missed on Kadari Richmond, that have lost a bunch of dudes to the portal. They've obviously got, again, a pretty good NIL bankroll because they got Kadari on campus. So those are the types of places, if I'm Riley uh, Kugel, that I would look at of trying to be. You know what else would make a lot of sense in that same vein? Right. You look at one of the Jayhawks' biggest rivals. You just got ahead about two hours rest. You get on, what is that, I-80 and head down. Is it I-70 or I-80? I can never keep in charge. Right. Whatever it is, no. jump on the highway, head about two hours west down to Manhattan. I know that uh, Bullet Manhattan Brewing Company, Bullet Manhattan Brewing Company, I don't think that they would mind having a guy like O'Reilly Kugel available to them. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.